वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स दिस क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम गेट 2015 एग्जाम सेट टू इट्स फॉर टू मार्क्स नाउ देयर इज अ स्मॉल कंफ्यूजन अराउंड द आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन व्हाट आई विल बी टीचिंग यू इज अ बिट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम व्हाट द ऑफिशियल आंसर की सेस एनीवेज वी आर गोइंग टू सी बोथ ऑफ द अप्रोचेस एंड यू कैन डिसाइड व्हिच वन सीम्स मोर कन्विंसिंग टू यू ओके आई विल आल्सो गिव माय ओपिनियन बट लेट्स फर्स्ट रीड द स्टेटमेंट it says a half adder is implemented with xor and and gates a full adder is implemented with two half adders and one or gate the propagation delay of an xor gate is twice as that of an and slash or gate the propagation delay of an and slash or gate is 1.2 microseconds a four bit ripple carry binary adder is implemented using four full adders The total propagation time of this four-bit binary adder is dash microseconds. Okay, so we need to find out the total delay of these four full adders. Okay, we are implementing a ripple carry adder using four full adders. This one is the first full adder, second, third, and fourth. Okay, a full adder is implemented using two half adders plus One XOR gate. So this blue one, it's a half adder. This one is also a half adder, and we have one OR gate. Okay. This entire circuit is a full adder. I hope you know that. Now let us try to calculate the total delay. See, this gate requires two point four microseconds. That means the sum will be available after two point four microseconds. Okay. Similarly. After initial 2.4 microseconds only, all of these sum bits will be available. Okay, so you can write 2.4, 2.4, and 2.4 here as well. Okay, because all of these XOR gates will work in parallel, as the input bits are readily available to all of these gates. These are the input numbers: a four-bit binary number A and a four-bit binary number B that we actually want to add. Okay. this carry in and both of these numbers are available initially now let us talk about this half adder see one of its input is available at time 0 but other input takes 2.4 microseconds okay that means we'll add this 2.4 to whatever delay it requires this one also requires 2.4 only okay so this 2.4 plus delay of this 2.4 will give you 4.8 okay that means the first sum bit will be available after this much time okay let us calculate what how much time will this carry take okay but before that let me write down uh, write down both the numbers okay you can see this sum bit requires 4.8 microseconds now let us analyze how much time will generating c1 require okay that means the carry generated from the first stage for the second stage you can see this one will require 1.2 microseconds and it is going to require 2.4 plus 1.2 microseconds okay so its output will be generated in 3.6 microseconds and this one will be generated in 1.2 microseconds only okay so 3.6 is obviously larger than this one so you can consider 3.6 only and this gate will take additional 1.2 microseconds so it is 4.8 in total okay now you can see both sum and carry bits require 4.8 4.8 microseconds each for the first stage now let us move on to this stage now this one need not be considered okay because after spending initial 2.4 microseconds only all of these have been generated but for this xor gate the second input first input is available after 2.4 microseconds second input takes more time okay so only this can be considered that means this one is going to take 4.8 uh, microseconds plus the delay of this xor gate is 2.4 so 4.8 plus 
Now let us see how much time is this gate going to require. This one is already done. By now, we have surely generated this. So this one is going to take 4.8 plus 1.2 plus 1.2. That means after 4.8 plus 2.4 microseconds, this carry will also be available. Similarly, this one is going to take additional 2.4 microseconds. So 4.8 plus 2.4, this much time has already been passed. It's going to take additional 2.4 microseconds. Okay, now let us analyze this carry out. It is C1, C2, C3. We are talking about this carry. This input is available after 4.8 plus 2.4 microseconds. This gate is going to take additional 1.2 microseconds and this one is going to take additional 1.2 microseconds. So the total delay of both of these is 2.4. Okay, so this much plus 2.4, I'm writing it. Okay, similarly, this one will also take 2.4 additional microseconds to generate this sum as well as carry final carry out the C4 will also take additional 2.4 microseconds only. So I'm writing this figure. It will be 4.8 plus 3 times 2.4. Here also 4.8 plus 3 times 2.4. Okay. 24 into 3 plus 48. 120. So this is going to be 12. 0 0.0 microseconds. Your answer is 12.0 microseconds. That's 12 microseconds. Okay. So the total delay is 12 microseconds. You can see we are counting delay of this one, then this one, this one, this one, and this one. This delay is neglected because all of these, these uh, the half headers that are placed before these half headers will take negligible time okay because if you count the time once you need not consider these three because all of these four are working in parallel okay this was what you need to keep in mind but the official answer key says the answer is not 12 it's actually more than 12 probably it was 19 something okay let us see how can we get the answer 19 and what is the logic behind it now if you see we, we are trying to implement a ripple carry adder. Okay, this one is the ripple input. The inputs that I have marked in red are the ripple inputs. I'm sure you know what is meaning of the word ripple. Okay, why is it called a ripple carry adder? I've discussed it in my theory lectures multiple times, but still I'm repeating. When you throw a stone in water, ripples are generated, those waves. Those are called ripple. Okay, so this is the first wave. It will trigger one more wave. This one will trigger uh, trigger one more. And the size of ripple is going to increase. Okay. So it's like this circuit triggers this one, this triggers this one, this triggers this one. But according to the official answer key, this input or the output from first adder is going to trigger this entire circuit. Okay. That means after this entire uh, circuit has generated the output in 4.8 microseconds only after these 4.8 microseconds you will consider this circuit okay that means this one will work as a enable input for the second four letter or first if you're starting the counting from zero okay now you can see this is a enable signal, but it's not the normal enable signal because this circuit will be enabled even if carry is zero or if carry is one. Okay. So the total time that will be taken is 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8. Okay. It will be 4.8 into 4. 8 fours are 32. 4 fours are 16 and 19. So according to official answer key, the answer is 19.2 microseconds. Okay. And the logic behind it is only after this full ladder 
has completed its operation this one will start working only after that point of time okay but you can see this one is not a very efficient approach even in my approach you can see we are generating ripples that one will also be termed as a ripple carry adder only okay this one will also be termed as a ripple carry adder and why not go for the efficient approach okay according to me the answer must be 12 microseconds only because we don't want to waste time in doing these all this stuff in serial manner okay when these inputs are readily available why not just calculate the sum and carry okay answer must be 12 but they are saying answer is 19.2 i have told you the logic that this one in some cases is treated as a enable for this entire circuit but that's not efficient 